DK Eyewitness National Parks. And a whole bunch of people worked on this book. But I'm just going to read about a few of the national parks. Because it's summer and it's a great time to go. So what is a national park? The U.S. is home to 63 beautiful national parks. A national park is a region protected by the government for its treasures, including its natural wonders, incredible wildlife, and cultural heritage. In the early 20th century, a government agency called the National Park Service was formed to safeguard these parks for all to enjoy. Ooh, a walk in the park, natural wonders. Outstanding scenery lies at the heart of all the parks. They are packed with varied landscapes, including forests, mountains, and volcanoes. Yeah, if you've studied biomes, you'll notice that many of these national parks play take place in different kinds of biomes. Hikes and trails. Exploring the parks on foot, whether hiking up a trail or climbing a cliffside, can be a great way of enjoying the beauty of nature. Historic past. Many parks pay homage to indigenous cultures that have made their mark on the land by highlighting ancient art and local legends. Park plants. A spectacular array of plants grow in the parks. The Hawaii silverwood thrives in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and Haleakala National Park. And you can read about the rest of this when you buy the book or find it at the library or just pause the video. U.S. National Parks. Spanning 30 states and two territories, the 63 national parks cover nearly 84.9 million acres, 34.4 million hectares of land, nearly 3.6% of the U.S., as well as adjoining waters. You will see nearly every type of habitat in these parks. Those are the biomes I was talking about, from sizzling deserts and craggy mountains to icy oceans. Hmm, Biscayne Park in Florida, Everglades National Park in Florida. The Everglades National Park spans an enormous 1.5 million acres of land at Florida's southern tip. Its sprawling marshes and mangroves provide a welcome wetland for hundreds of different species of wildlife. The U.S. Virgin Islands. Sitting on the fringes of the Caribbean, this national park dominates the island of St. John. It offers plentiful tropical forests, white sand beaches, and warm coral reefs, as well as ruins of many sugar plantations, a reminder of the region's history of slavery. Mm, Smoky Mountains, Mammoth Cave, Shenandoah, New River Gorge. Acadia. I think I've been to this one with my friend Sarah. Acadia. One of the most visited national parks, Acadia lies off the coast of Maine with granite mountains, rugged headlands, and idyllic lakes. The changing seasons reveal the vivid colors of the forest in fall and a pristine blanket of snow in winter. Mm, Cuyahoga Valley, Indiana Dunes, Isle Royale. Voyagers? I don't know about this one. I've never heard of this national park, so I'll read about it. Covering a huge expanse close to the Canadian border, Voyagers is a combination of vast waterways, rugged islands, and thick forests. The waterways were once used as travel routes by French-Canadian voyagers, fur traders from Canada, who exchanged goods for beaver fur from the local Ojibwe people. It looks like it's a fun place to go in winter, too. Adventures on ice. Plummeting winter temperatures cause lakes to freeze, creating a playground for winter sports. Once the National Park Service confirms the ice is suitably thick and safe, two ice roads are opened. Visitors can then choose between driving, skiing, or snowshoe hiking. Hot springs. Ooh, a very different kind of national park. One of the smallest national parks, Hot Springs covers an area of only nine square miles. Its historical bathhouses were fed with the nearby mineral-laden waters, which are, of course, hot. It says sizzling springs. 
Scorching hot, mineral-rich water emerges from the ground through 47 thermal springs. In 1832, a law was passed to protect the land and the water in this area. Oh, and I always love caves, so I'm going to read about Wind Cave National Park in South Dakota. At ground level, Wind Cave National Park has vast prairies and dense forests, which provide a home for wildlife. Below ground lies one of the longest and oldest caves in the world. This was the first cave system ever to be protected as a national park. Windy Wonder. Named after the strong winds that blow around the entrance, Wind Cave has 150 miles of underground tunnels. It also contains boxwork crystalline rock formations. I've been there and it's very, very cool. And yeah, the wind is really strong that you can feel blowing out of a cave. Big Bend National Park. A gift to the nation from Texas, Big, Bre Big Bend is celebrated for its incredible range of wildlife and star-studded nights in the Chihuahuan Desert. The park's diverse history comes to life in the form of fossils, abandoned mines, and indigenous artifacts. Ooh, Carlsbad Caverns. I'm going to do one more cave. Beneath the Chihuahuan Desert lies a spectacular underground network of more than 100 limestone caves. Formed between 4 and 6 million years ago, Carlsbad Caverns is one of the best preserved cave systems on Earth. And the reason I remember it is the Bat Colony. An enormous colony of Brazilian free-tailed free bats roosts inside the caves during summer, when up to a million bats fly from the caves every evening, creating an amazing aerial spectacle for visitors. Oh, and White Sands, New Mexico. This dazzling white landscape is the world's largest gypsum dune field. Its sweeping mounds of gypsum sand create a truly unique desert, which is popular with hikers and sand sledders alike. Uh, one of the most famous national parks Yellowstone in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. It's a big park. In 1872, Yellowstone became the U.S.'s first national park, named after the Yellowstone River that weaves its way through it. Bubbling mud pots, gushing geysers, and colorful hot springs dot this natural spa, which is home to a wide range of large animals. Glacier in Montana. Living up to its name, Glacier National Park stands testament to millennia of glacier activity. Deep valleys, alpine mountains, and more than 700 miles of trails draw hikers, cyclists, and campers to this welcoming wilderness. Ooh, an icy national park. I'd like to go to that one. I've not been yet. Arches in Utah. Living up to its name, this park plays host to more than 2,000 sandstone arches in the Utah desert. But this is just one example of many different rock formations at arches, including pinnacles, columns, towers, and spires. Oh, and Zion Canyon, that's a fun one. Known for its rich canyons carved by the Virgin River, steep cliffs and dramatic viewpoints, Utah's first national park has something for everyone. Adventurous, climber, ad adventurous explorers can reach dizzy heights with a strenuous climb up to Angel's Landing, while families may prefer an easy hike to the waterfalls along the Emerald Pools Trail. Ooh, very nice. And of course, the Grand Canyon. My mother actually worked as the postmaster of one of the Grand Canyon rims. It's so big that it's almost like two national parks, the North Rim and the South Rim. Anyway, Grand Canyon in Arizona. Like a vast slash on Arizona's face, the nearly one mile deep Grand Canyon stretches across an incredible 278 miles. For about six million years, its canyons and cliffs were gouged out by the ground, out of the ground by the Colorado River that snakes its way through this truly spectacular national park. Mmm, there's so many to choose from, but how about Death Valley in California? 
Welcome to the hottest and driest national park in the U.S. This extreme region in the Mojave Desert was given its name by the 19th century settlers who found the valley difficult to cross and feared they would perish in the scorching sun and remote terrain. Lowest point. The Death Valley, uh, located at 280 feet below sea level, Badwater Basin is the lowest point in the U.S. This huge expanse of salt flats creates a dazzling white sheen. In addition to sodium chloride, common salt, other minerals found on the flats include calcite, gypsum, and borax. All that's in Death Valley. Whoa! In 1913, temperatures in Death Valley soared to a record-setting 134 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, back to the West Coast where I'm from. Redwood in California. The tallest trees on Earth have grown to record-breaking heights at Redwood National Park over many centuries. Giant redwoods dominate the landscape, which varies between ancient woodland, open prairies, and rocky coastline. Coast redwoods are the tallest living things on Earth, growing to heights of nearly 390 feet. Hyperion, the tallest redwood and tree in the world, is 1.25 times taller than the Statue of Liberty. Denali in Alaska. At Denali, snow-capped mountains tower over an alpine tundra landscape crisscrossed by braided rivers. There is only one established roadway in the park, which was the first one in the U.S. to protect wildlife habitats. It is home to many large mammals, including grizzly bears, wolves, and moose. I'm just going to do one or two more here. I think, you know what, I think Hawaii's volcanoes are going to be the last one. Hawaii volcanoes... Seen on this hot spot of volcanic activity on Hawaii's Big Island are ashen deserts, a lava-lined coastline, and many giant volcanoes, including the summits of Mount Kilauea and Mauna Loa, two of the world's most active volcanoes. Wow, look at that. You have to go there when one of these is active, but it happens pretty often to see that lava. So, those were some really cool national parks, but we didn't even cover half of them. There are so many national parks. And I would highly recommend, if you're here in the U.S. or have a chance to visit, get out if you can. Get a National Parks Pass. It's $80, but it'll last you a whole year and get you into all the national parks that you can get to in that year. So that was DK's Eyewitness National Parks. And this is EDU Kidspace. Subscribe for more stories, books, and lessons. Hit the bell button so you're notified when I put out new videos. And if you want to support the channel, you can hit the Patreon link in the video description. Thanks for watching.